Yes. Okay. So, hi from me, I'm Maria. Uh, I'm a bioinformatics engineer and I work in the Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today about how to basically manage uh, reproducibility and production uh, uh, using uh, of genomic workflows using Docker. So I don't know how familiar is the audience with like all this genomic data, but uh, so if you ask like why biodata is like so special, the first uh, answer is that they are very very big. Actually, it's expected that big biodata is going to be the biggest of the big data. And then people normally ask, oh, why is that? Is the genome so big? And uh, well, the genome is big, that's true. But the data that has to be stored for each genome is actually 30 times the size of the genome. And this is to make up for uh, all the errors that occur during sequencing and preliminary uh, analysis. And on top of that, it is expected by 2025 that we will be having uh, between 100 million and 2 billion uh, human genomes sequenced. The data, uh, the data storage demands for that is between uh, 2 to 40 exabyte, meaning that storing and processing this genomic data will actually exceed the computing challenges of running both YouTube and Twitter together. So this is why big biodata are so interesting to people and why there is so much fuss lately about it. Now, uh, what's more, they're very complex, and they also come with many different types uh, because they depend a lot on the sequence technologies, and this uh, results in like also different filtering and processing needs, and of course, they are ever-changing. Like, the moment technology changes or some filtering processes, all downstream analysis changes. So, for example, if today uh, sequencing changes, we have a breakthrough technology out there, we'll need a second workshop, and whatever I'm gonna be telling you today, that won't stand, more or less. So this is, this is the, the world of big biodata. Now, in, uh, in the real world, uh, so genomic workflows that are designed to deal and uh, analyze this uh, big genomic data, uh, they, are, uh, they consist of like multiple uh, stages, which, and each stage uh, executes different scripts uh, system commands and external tools that are being normally deployed in a hosting computing environment that normally it's an, it is an HPC, right? So because of that, of course, these data are complex. Okay, I'm going to use this. Oops. This doesn't work. Or, ah, doesn't matter. So they are very complex. They consist of multiple uh, third-party software. They have, of course, many dependencies, and again, they frequently change because if you find a new type of analysis that is better, or you need more information to take to be taken account in a specific pipeline, you need to change the pipeline, and they are always, always changing. And another thing I would like to highlight here is that also scientific uh, uh, software now it should work. Yes, uh, also changes due to the uh, their like research nature based, right? And what is also very essential here is proper versioning because even sometimes different releases of the same program can actually produce dramatically different results. So what I have been telling you for the past slide is that the big data, uh, not the big data, their workflows, and even the programs that the workflows call, everything can change from one day to other and they will keep changing and there is nothing you can, and no one can do about it. Now, on top of that, they are very big and very complex. And to make things work, someone into account, uh, to take into account all the dependencies and the demanding, uh, the, the, the computational demand <coughs> of all of these analyses. So, I guess you can see the problem, right? That maintaining such a scientific uh, production chain with controlled version within a standard production environment is almost impossible in practice. Um, and to make the impossible possible, we created Nextflow. So before going on what it is Nextflow, I want you to realize something. We are a group in my center of like uh, 10 people. Uh, half of us are like coming from a computational background and we do a lot of sequences because we are part of big consortiums and a lot of NGS analysis, right? So most of our days we look like this or we used to look like that three years ago before Nextflow. 
like looking at our like cryptic bus scripts, trying to figure out, oh my God, why this is crashing again on the SHPC cluster? What went wrong? What dependency? Oh, I need to change this. Where is the line uh, number 500 something that I need to say in this specific like configuration, right? And by the end of the day, we look like this. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we said, okay, we cannot go on with our lives like that. And then uh, one of the main things that we were wishing is that our cryptic bus, uh, bus script can actually handle data parallelization without us having to write a single line of code. And in our effort to actually make that happen, uh, we stumbled upon the data flow model, which is a high level parallelization model that allows automatic data parallelization. And uh, next flow was created. Another thing that we had as a big <coughs> problem is like, imagine having a huge genomic pipeline is supposed to run for three weeks. Week number two crashes, and then here you go. Two weeks are lost, you need to restart, right? Uh, but you have deadlines and you have your collaborators in America that they need to present the results in the NIH, that they need to get the next grant, right? So big problem. So what we developed in uh, Nextflow is a caching system, basically, that allows for continuous checkpoints. And most importantly, it actually allows you to resume the pipeline from the last successful executed step. Another thing uh, is that, so basically Nextflow, it's a framework, and I didn't say that, sorry. It's a framework, so it's a domain-specific language based on grouping. And we were really, really enjoying like creating all this new language and all these new bioinformatic operators, and we're like, oh my god, we're so fascinated by that. But at the same time, we weren't ready to give up our favorite Perl scripts, Python scripts, Bash scripts, right? Not to mention that we really do have a special uh, relationship with one-liners. So we turned uh, next loop to polyglot, meaning that you can open what we call the three-quote block, and you can write whatever you want there, as long as it's a scripting thing, and next loop can execute it, zero problem. Then. Uh, we were really searching three ye or two years and a half ago, actually, uh, for a way to package everything when we ship them. Because as I told you, whatever we design in our laptop, it's meant to run on an HPC clutter, a cluster, if not on a cloud or not in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So then we stumbled upon Docker. Docker back then was just a GitHub project. No one almost knew about it. And we contacted actually the people that were <coughs> making uh, Docker and we were like, Okay, how can we integrate it? And Nextflow was actually the first framework that was uh, giving full support of Docker. And even up to today, is the only scientific framework that provides that support. Of course, we made it portable with all the platforms, the, at least the most used one. And also, Nextflow offers a good, um, has a good integration with GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab, basically, for sharing. Now, the, the Nextflow rationale is to reuse any existing scripts and tools to do high level parallelization, you don't write anything. Nexo does it all for you. To be portable across platforms, and of course, when you combine all of this together, the ultimate goal is to enable reproducibility and to be able to like ship everything everywhere and people to use it like with the magic tackles like start, run it, done. So that was the concept. And how it works? Okay, so you have a workflow which is like it's a declare it's uh, it's written in a declarative manner. I don't know how many of you have done functional programming. So for those that have done functional prog programming, it's very easy to get the uh, next flow concept. For the people that are used more to like scripting and like doing things in kind of like a messy linear way, it's, it's a, a bit more difficult to actually uh, get the concept, but it's not impossible. <laughs> So basically you have a pipeline that is composed by several processes. Each process has a set of input, output, and a script snip snippet to be executed. And now the question is like, okay, if I don't tell Nextflow like how to do the parallelization, how does it know how to parallelize my data? So basically the, it gets the parallelization from the task dependencies which are defined implicitly by basically the input and the output of the different steps. And this is how a process looks. Input, output, and your script. As you see, this is bash. And that's it. And if you hear had like, hello, hola, <coughs> uh, ciao, it will just run it automatically. Like, it will run, it will run, uh, it will call different nodes, for example, if it runs on the computer to print it. And this is exactly what I was saying before. So you get, you, it creates kind of like a channel and everything runs in parallel, your data, basically. Oh. Yeah. 
And is this uh, the output and input is a type so that you say this script outputs fast queue or whatever format you have so that you can only specify pipelines that work together? I mean, if you have different chunks and one outputs Excel files and the other expects CSV files, then you say like, uh, oh. Uh, so have it like a type? No, so language. we have, so, uh, so Nexo has different level of like uh, uh, Nextflow experts. Is the ones that they just don't care about Nextflow, all they want is get their bus script in, like split it in tasks and just have it parallelize their data. And there you don't need to like specify anything, no fast queue, no nothing, input, output, and then things go, like, go like that. But there, then we have created uh, like uh, next flow operators, as we call them, and there we have fast up, fast queue type. So then if you want to be specific and you want to be more fine grained and you don't want basically to have everything in bash, although they are in, in, in task, yeah, you can, you can do more fine grained uh, programming. And of course there are like, the Groovy experts, where they can uh, use all the magic of Groovy and Java, and they can even exceed the, the next flow language, basically. I mean, but wouldn't it be nice if, if you have, a, like you said, a three weeks long running job, and, and the, the last step is putting CSV to yeah. Excel? Or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as it happens, the, the, the last step, or the, the, the step before the last step, uh, exports something else, So, but, but you didn't anticipate because someone changes, just changes the, the last step, the, the functions of the, of the step. Uh, and yeah. what it comes down to, like having uh, like no this problem. type. You can, you can change the last step. If the previous, like, let's say you have uh, seven steps, seventh step was changed, someone did something uh, stupid there, and it doesn't work anymore, or it doesn't give you what you were, uh, were expecting. No problem. If you have cached the, the other six, and they, you are sure they are correct, you change the last one, you do minus resume and it will give you what, what you are expecting. Yeah, but if you type input and output, then you can pre-check if this pipeline will even work. Ah, sure, end. sure, yeah, you can... Um, you take this step output CSVs and the next step will input CSVs I and agree. then you are certain that it will work? I agree, you are completely right. Yeah, I know what you mean, um, but we're six people, <laughs> but we're... <laughs> we're sevens. We're, and Nextflow was not even a major project, really. And Nextflow was like a side thing of like us going crazy and saying, okay, okay, we're computer science, we have to do something. We cannot keep living our lives like this. So it's a lot, I agree with you, it's a, it's a lot of like... That's the best motivation. Is it open source though? Yeah. On Everything GitHub? Open, yeah. And it has its own side and we have documentation and everything and we're more than happy for ideas and people to contribute if they want to. So basically this is how it does. Get the, so you get the input data, it does the splitting, uh, it uh, does the task, the map, and again, it collects everything. And I'm going a bit fast. So this is how a real script will look, right? This is a blast script, so input, output, uh, here. The, here are the paths, basically, input, output, and the, the script, but here is just the blast code, basically. Um, and the only thing that you do is next to run, last uh, test and F and you can even do it like even right now and uh, this is what next one will do and it will keep doing that regardless <coughs> if it is your laptop or you have moved it on the HVC or you have moved it on Amazon. It will keep doing the same and it will understand on the one case that has cores on the computer and the other one that has nodes, on the other one maybe that has pot distances or blades if it's on a supercomputing center. Now, uh, I want to focus on Nextflow with Docker and not so much on uh, Nextflow. And the idea here is actually to uh, empower reproducibility, as I said, and to be able to like run this, uh, to share our pipelines and run it across different platforms, right? And uh, so, a pipeline is self-contained and you have all your external uh, scripts and configuration keep kept in a container, right? So I'm not gonna go more into this. So here are the beautiful containers, right? It's a very simple context, like you can put whatever you want. This you can have balloons, there are ducks, there are oranges, and it doesn't matter basically. All come in one nice package. <coughs> so, <coughs> the, so I, it, it has already been mentioned that the way to do it is like, let's get my script, let's get everything, and let's put everything into the container, right? Wrong. <laughs> so if you do that, then more you will kind of like kill data parallelization. It's not going to be that easy because everything's going to be confined in a Docker. Of course, unless you have 40 people or you have a company that really does uh, good Docker 
whatever modifications to actually make it run uh, really good. But if you don't have that, then what we do is like put in a Docker only your binary tools, your environmental configuration, leave your next flow uh, uh, workflow outside it, and then basically let's next flow. Let's say you have a script that has two tasks and. Uh, if you had put it all in one token, it would run everything serially. Now that the tasks are independent, next to actually can call one docker, uh, one container can initiate one container for task one and another one for task two, and then run these tasks in parallel and then collect the results for in a table or whatever you want to do. And how it would look in a uh, in a class, it would be like this. Next to basically will ask for nodes on every node, will like start containers, which we'll switch off container based on your workflow. So you kind of like uh, understand this again automatically. All you need to know, all you need to write is to specify your images and for which task, <coughs> like each image, uh, each uh, container has to be the, uh, executed. And this is how it will look on, a, uh, on Amazon. So, Again, you have next flow, but this time you need a scheduler. A scheduler that will uh, instantiate the spawned instances. Then, then uh, next flow will start the dockers on these post instances. So here I'm showing cluster K. Why cluster K? So I don't know how familiar are you with Amazon? OK. So uh, cluster K is a company. It was a new startup that was bought from Amazon like five months ago for 50 million euro because it created this beautiful uh, scheduler, Cyrus, and Cyrus is able to deal with spot instances. Basically, it's like a broker for stock market. And Amazon just bought it, and this is going to be uh, offered as Amazon services in the future. So Nextflow is already, again, we had uh, we had contacted them, and we had already like uh, adapted Nextflow and everything, so it already runs. Now it's not possible anymore. Amazon closed everything. Uh, and now, let's have a RNA seq pipeline. So, a real one. So normally here we, uh, what we have is read pairs, so basically small chunks of DNA, then a reference genome, we try to basically map this, and then we try to do trans uh, transcript quantification. And I will try, so. So this is the Nextflow uh, website, and it's really easy to, to have Nextflow up and running. All you need is the Java version uh, 7 plus. And then you just copy paste this, and then that's it. You give it one minute to, and Nextflow is installed. And here, so here is just, uh, maybe I can, <coughs> oh. oops. Does this look better? Okay, so, oops, sorry for that. Okay, so as you hear, this is just an empty file. I have nothing here, right? So, but I have Nextflow installed. And what I do, Nextflow run RNA toy, which is the pipeline I showed before. And Nextflow will try to run this thing. See, yeah, yeah, and it breaks. Why does it break? Because this is my Mac. Of course I don't have uh, all the pieces that uh, a genomic pipeline requires uh, installed here. So what I do, minus with token. Okay. And here we go. Mapping, building index, mapping, and hopefully, sorry, it's a Mac. It's a MacBook Air, so everything goes slow. Uh, so basically, I don't even actually have the RNA toy pipe, uh, pipeline on my Mac. And here you can see the results, which are basically these files here. Which are the, the transcript quantification, basically, if I do. Uh, So, looks beautiful, right? <laughs> That's why we're like. Uh, so here is where the RNA toy is. So this is on GitHub. I didn't have it online, but what uh, Nextflow does, because it has GitHub integration, it actually first scans your computer. So like, she asked me to run RNA toy. I cannot find anything 
called RNA toy. Then it goes to GitHub and it's like, do you have something that's called RNA toy? Ah, found it. It clones it, right? And then it sees that, I, and when I say with Docker, oh, if I don't say with Docker, then it expects that I have uh, installed everything that the pipeline requires to, to run. But I don't, and then it crashes. Then I say with Docker, then it realizes that in this uh, GitHub repository, it should have a, a Docker image that has to pull down and run it. And if I do here, okay, Docker images, you can see it here, right? So that's the, that's the image that was required. So it gets all the image down. So here I did a trick. I had done the image from before because it takes a bit more time to get the image for the first time and then it's really, it really runs faster. So. And it expects Sorry. the image name to be a NetFlow or NextFlow slash would, would, and then the name. I would say, so I will skip this because this has to do with subversion. This is the what I just showed with Docker basically. Um, and this is the support for different platforms. And this is what you asked me. So basically here, you need for each mm -hmm. process to tell it. Like, uh, the image that you're gonna use is this one. And then you can give whatever image you want. Here you can specify the executor. So this is how he, it knows. You don't need to specify much more because it knows. It has, uh, as I said before here, it has support for all of these platforms. So as long as you just say, we have different names, SG, Slurm, whatever, and then you give, if you have a specialized queue or memory requirement, so this is basically the configuration file, and that's all, all the thing that you need. And of course you need to create the image, right? Uh, so, to finish with my presentation, uh, no, Nextflow and Docker, what it does, it actually allows you to have self-contained and reproducible analysis. It simplifies parallelization, and it's portable acro across multiple platforms. Uh, if you are interested more, I will give this talk on Wednesday, I, but if you are interested more about the impact of Docker containers, we, we published the paper and that, that came out last week, that actually we measure the impact, like what's happening with genomic pipelines, <coughs> and we provide our equivalent IBM statistics. And uh, one last thing before closing, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, uh, CI, but basically these are like, um, online platform that you can actually get uh, get your code and you can run it. So this, before Docker, was not able for like scripting stuff because you need to have all the dependencies and now on. But now that you have Docker, you can actually combine everything and then you can just pull to these platforms and we have all this another one of the features that Nextflow now supports. And then basically here, whoever like does any kind of change, you can just run it on your browser, on these big platforms that are open and then check that everything is okay with your with your pipeline. So going back to your, we don't have what you asked, the alert, but at least you can check that whatever you are doing is working. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I may be the devil's advocate, I mean this sounds a lot like Storm, Spark, Flink, and all this streamlined yeah. mm -hmm. process platforms that are from the other <coughs> part of the IT world. This one. No, or I mean this, that's <coughs> Net, that Net, Next Flow. Yeah. I mean it's, it's similar to chain, chain uh, map reduce. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it have is. you have you considered Google. this as well as as uh, integrating it to Flink or Spark, Storm, all these okay. projects? So, uh, Spark is a data flow uh, based model. Google, a year and a half. Uh, oh no, actually last summer. So yeah, a year and a half more or less. They made the fancy uh, uh, statement and advertisement that data flow is the successor of MapReduce that is going to revolutionize. The, the world of big data, so on, so on, so on, so on. So, yes, it comes from the other side, but as I told you, uh, our con our motivation was that we wanted some that handles parallelization for us. And I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna write CUDA, I'm not gonna write even BAS, I'm not gonna go and go and write a uh, map reduce. As long as I can have something, I have task one, task two, this is input, this is output, the output of this thing has to go to, task, has to be the input of task two, I expect my framework to understand it. In our hand, it does miracles. It solves our problems, and this is the only reason why we created it. <laughs> now, uh, it has been useful for many other people. We are already working with Sanger, Bro, uh, Max Planck. Uh, we have several like different uh, other institutions, companies. 
uh, Cornell made the, even uh, they created an ID that uh, so basically whoever works with editors there is a next flow support thing that kind of like you can edit stuff they use it and so on so this is us we're we're six people literally and Paolo is the the beating heart of Nextflow, and he's the lead. Uh, so me and Pablo are already here. So you have half of the team here, and uh, we have uh, Nextflow repository. We have our uh, the homepage, and we also have uh, a twenty four hour communication for whoever can ask us. And Paolo is really amazing in answering on twenty four hours. So yeah, and that's it. Very important. Are there any questions? Yes, please. So how hard is this to set up outside of you know if I have a, another cloud? Um, like you said this up at the Broad and stuff like this. How hard is it to set up you know, like at the Broad Institute in your cloud? To to set up Nextflow, to set up Nextflow, nothing. It's it's like really nothing. Yeah. Like, if I don't want to use AWS or I have access to another cloud, then it's really yeah, yeah. Nextflow, it's uh, Nextflow is like basically it's like installing uh, Java Groovy. Like as long as you have a Java install that is uh, version set, uh, seven and higher. Right. It, it works, you have no problem. But then if you want to use Nextflow with Docker, then that's the problem. This is the problem that people have been having in Broad and uh, Sanger, because there are like individuals that kind of had installed it and they want to run, run it with Docker. And then there, uh, they, they don't have uh, uh, sudo rights, okay. right? Uh, because it's big. And then they have the problem that they cannot use uh, fully the, the Docker support of Nextflow because of that. But that is not our, I mean, if they can come with an agreement with Sanger or Broad, or whoever other institute that, um, yeah, mm -hmm. let our, uh, give us access to use Docker, basically, so the rights for Dockers, then yeah, you can use it, you can use everything. Okay. Okay, good. Talk to you ahead of time. Miracle Don't tell me that one. Mm -hmm. Ah, but you have to, to hook up your computer, though this would might take some time. So any questions so far? <laughs>